Good evening and welcome to this edition of News Leader on 6. I'm Jim Fuller. And I'm Amelia Marquez. In tonight's news, all 147 school districts in Tennessee have completed the first ever statewide assessment of school facilities and safety procedures. It's homecoming week for the Tullahoma Wildcats and we'll hear from Rebecca French. General Manager of the Manchester Coffee County Convention Center and Tom Corrington will continue with his interview with the Tullahoma Police Chief Paul Blackwell who just completed a four-month stint as City Administrator. We'll have these stories and more on tonight's News Leader on 6. Rush Bricken demands governmental financial responsibility. Rush Bricken cares about veterans and will defend the Constitution. Rush Bricken knows small business creates good jobs. On November 6th, you have a choice for your Tennessee state representative. I'd like to be your next Tennessee representative. For fiscal soundness. I'm picking Bricken. For low taxes. I'm picking Bricken. For good jobs and roads. I'm picking Bricken. Vote Rush Bricken November 6th to the Tennessee State House of Representatives. Have you heard the news? Russell Barnett Automotive Family has launched its new website, russellbarnett.com. Very user friendly. Over 1,000 new and pre owned vehicles to choose from. Online credit applications. Hometown auto rental. Customer testimonials. Trade appraisals. Certified collision center. Service department scheduling. Too many reasons to mention why. I keep asking the question why buy anywhere else? My wife Jackie has always been the life of the party. But things changed when she couldn't be as active anymore. They told me I needed a double knee replacement. It's not as big a deal as it used to be, but she still needed to go to rehab. I was amazed at how good the therapists were at Life Care. They took really good care of me. They took excellent care of her. And now she's back doing the things she loves. And that makes everyone happy. Life Care Center of Tullahoma wants you to get active and live well. Welcome back. Tennessee Governor Bill Haslam and Commissioner of Education Candace McQueen announced on Wednesday that all 147 school districts in Tennessee have completed the first ever statewide assessment of school facilities and safety procedures. Additionally, all districts have submitted applications to receive their allocations of the $35 million school security funding and may now use those funds to implement identified school security and safety needs. This was the first time the state has led a comprehensive effort to determine the security needs at individual schools. Based on the findings following this assessment, all school districts were eligible to apply for two grants to receive funding for local safety and security issues. In many cases, these funds have allowed districts to make both minor and major improvements, such as enhanced door locks, improved visitor screening procedures, and shatter-resistant glass that will provide long-term benefits to the school. Several districts use the grant allocations to improve mental health services for students by funding salaries for school counselors and child psychologists. The safety review process and related discussions also resulted in additional local funding for the school's safety, including an increase of 213 new school resource officers, primarily funded by the local government. The Tullahoma Wildcats captured their fifth consecutive win last Friday night in Fayetteville, besting the Lincoln County Falcons by a score of 21 to 10. It's homecoming this week as the Cats take on Nolansville Friday night at Wilkins Stadium. John Gray spoke with head coach John Olive about this week's opponent. Big ball game coming up this yeah. Friday. And we have homecoming. Home, homecoming week this uh, week. So, uh, be a good time for if, if you want to come back and see some of your friends and so forth. I uh, welcome you to come back to the high school and uh, be a part of the homecoming game and festivities and so forth this week. Uh, Are you going to lock your kids up? <laughs> you know, it's just one of those tough things. Yeah. And uh, it, you gotta, you got to have enough maturity about you to stay focused about what your job is. We play Nolansville, and Nolansville is a team that, is 2-0 and in our region. Uh, Maplewood's the other team that's 2-0, and as well as ourselves. We've got a goal to, to be region champions, and uh, the winner of this ball game stays in that race. Uh, all three of us have to play each other, Nolansville, Tullahoma, and Maplewood. We all have to play each other, and Nolansville still has to play Marshall County as well. Uh, so, 
they finally have a senior class and um, have everybody back. They've been missing their quarterback. Uh, he was supposed to come back a week ago, so I assume he's made it back now, Wharton. And uh, they're a big, good-looking football team. Uh, they gave Brentwood all Brentwood wanted last night. And Brentwood's a 6A school that plays at a rather high level in the 6A. So our hands will be full. Uh, but um, if we want to be region champs, they're the next game up. Right. Next people that standing in the way, and uh, and we'll see if we can't scrap and find a way to get a win and um, stay in this race. Uh, and Maplewood's been playing well, also. Oh, Maplewood's playing really well, and uh, they're probably considered the top team in our region. They're top ten in the state. And um, so forth. We don't see them till week ten, so not worried about them right, right now. Right. I just know that we can stay in that region championship race uh, if we beat Nolansville. We'll be three and zero, oh. and then the next week we'd go to Lawrence County. If we beat Lawrence County, uh, then we're automatically going to host a first round playoff game. Uh, That'd be and great. Then in week ten. We'll see Maplewood up at Maplewood, and the winner of that game uh, would be the region champion, and the loser would be second place by that scenario right. that I just went through. You know, got to take them one game at a time, and right now, Nolensville sitting there right in front of us, uh, they know what's on the line. If they want to win a region championship, they know they've got to win that game. So Here, at uh, home, our home. At our home. Stay with us. More news leaders coming up after these messages. It's football time in Tennessee, and nobody tackles the competition like the Russell Barnett Automotive family with six locations to serve you, certified collision center, over 1,000 new and pre-owned vehicles to choose from at russellbarnett.com, hometown auto rental, limited lifetime powertrain warranty on certain units, certified pre-owned units. Too many reasons to mention why I keep asking the question, why buy anywhere else? Ah, the glory days. Running to daylight on the gridiron and chasing a ball with a mind of its own. Cheering the team to victory and marching to the beat of your own drum. Memories that last a lifetime. But sometimes we're reminded of our glory days in ways we'd rather forget. Get back in the game. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live and play well. Welcome back. We continue tonight with part three of John Gray's interview with Rebecca French, general manager of the Manchester Coffee County Convention Center. How, how, are, your, how are your relationships with the three different because this is this is the county conference center but because it's county dollars that that this deals with it's also deals with has to deal with Tullahoma mm -hmm. to a certain extent right. and, and Manchester City mm -hmm. so you as a manager have to deal with three different agencies Correct, and I, and I don't interact as much with Tullahoma, but I do give them any information that right. you know that they definitely should be uh, privy to. And then if there's any requests from Tullahoma, I I definitely give that information out. Um, but I deal primarily with the county and the city, and um, you know working together sometimes can be difficult, especially mm -hmm. when you have a matter of a difference of opinion or um, you have a personal agenda involved or any of that. That definitely changes the climate that you're able to work together in. Um, what was the question though? I apologize. No, I mean just is, is there a difference in relationship between the city the city governments and the county government is, is, as far as what you're attempting and trying to do at the conference center? Well there's a significant relationship um, difference I would say that. Um, I'm hoping that with the change of the election and some of our elected officials getting acclimated and and asking for information and educating themselves on what the entire purpose and, and the whole picture is of the conference center some of those relationships will change um, but the, the city they seem to understand what we're doing and they understand the economics to it and that's that's important we can look at a bottom line all day and we can discuss you know how much that bottom line should actually cost somebody but the economics to the 
lodging tax we bring in, the sales tax dollars, the um, just the general foot traffic in our restaurants and you know small businesses when people come to town. The city understands, and if they don't, they always ask me questions. Mm -hmm. um, I have a really good working relationship with the street department and the water department, so when we have projects that would normally cost a lot of money, the street and the water department have come over and helped us, and it reduces costs significantly. And they've done that before this became a public interest topic. They've done that because it's the right thing to do for our community, and, um, and we really appreciate especially the street department. They've helped us a lot on the outdoor area that I got the grant for. They just were instrumental in keeping the cost down. So um, the county, we, we have a lot of work to do to, to um, rebuild relationships and make sure that everybody knows what the importance is of the conference center and what would happen if it's not there anymore. What what would happen if, if we make decisions that were to negatively impact all of Coffee County? Because, I mean, the state's report came out uh, two, three weeks ago and last year, um, tourism in, in Coffee County, we taxpayers paid $325 less per taxpayer in, ta in taxes due to tourism. Not just the conference center, but tourism, right. which is the second largest industry, the second largest employer in the state is hospitality and tourism. So this year's report came out and said Coffee County taxpayers paid $363 less in taxes because of hospitality and tourism. Um, and, and the conference center is one of the five major generators of hospitality and tourism in Coffee County. County. So to take one of those out would significantly impact the entire county, not just the city of Manchester, but every, you know, all of us. Um, and I would think that that, you know, we would lose our spot. We're 21st out of the state. Out of our 95 counties, we're 21st, and we've kept that position for the last two years. And we hope to see it, we'd like to be 20. 19, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, but that it takes a lot of vision and a lot of working together to get there, um, and that's what I hope to see out of out of this election cycle and the people that are getting acclimated to their offices that that we come together and we have professional dialogue that we can listen and give feedback and maybe not always agree but find common ground that benefits the entire community. Okay. More news is coming up in a moment. It's not invoice. It's not MSRP. It's not Christmas Day, although it may feel like it. It's the lowest prices in Middle Tennessee, period. It's a Stan McNabb Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram or Stan McNabb Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac. Before these prices are gone forever. All right, the cat's out of the bag at Carroll Street Liquor in Tullahoma. Now you know where to go if you're planning a get-together and want the ideal wine or spirit. Party planning can be stressful, but at Carroll Street Liquor, you'll find everything you need. Mixers, gift sets, and all of your favorite spirit brands. So if you're feeling the pressure to pull off the ideal party, come to Carroll Street Liquor and select among the seemingly endless supply of wines, spirits, gift sets, and more. Your perfect party, it's in the bag with Carroll Street Liquors. Welcome back. Tom Corrington recently interviewed Tullahoma Police Chief Paul Blackwell, who has served as an interim city administrator for the last four months and has now returned to his regular job. Tonight we bring you part three of that interview. We're talking today, folks, with uh, Chief Paul Blackwell, who has been the uh, Tullahoma City Administrator uh, for four months and is uh, now in September uh, going to return to the uh, police department as the uh, full-time chief. And uh, <clears throat> I was thinking of asking you whether your experience as a city administrator, uh, how, how you went into that and how you, it flavored you and whether it uh, adds anything to your return to the police department. Uh, and and I, that definitely because the experiences I've gained from the city administrator position will help me as the chief knowing how I can address issues in the city, knowing, as I said, I met some, have met new people, created new relationships, gives me another avenue to go to for assistance and support. Um, so it definitely helped me to, I think, be better at being the chief. Of course, one of the things we had to deal with when I first came on board as the interim city administrator was the budget. You know, for 11 years, I've been doing the police department budget. I knew it in and out. I, you know, I knew how much money we have in this account and what we were anticipating to spend. And 
And then when you get in the city administrator, as I said, it now morphed into eight or nine different nine departments. Nine different budgets. <laughs> right. And, and having to understand <clears throat> their needs uh, as opposed to just what my needs in the police department were. Yeah. Now it's the needs yeah. of everybody. So it allowed me to branch out more. Um, that was a key element. A uh, key element also in, in seeing how progress in the city works. we got some great things going on in the city right now. And a lot of people just sit back and, okay, we got this going on, but then don't really understand the, the mechanics of how it all worked or what's going to come of it as a result. Um, so I got to see that side of it. And, and again, I think that's going to benefit me in serving the community, not just as the chief. As the chief, I've got basically three bosses. Uh, the, city, the city administrator is my day-to-day -day boss. The board of mayor and aldermen are my statutory bosses and then I've got the citizens of the Tullahoma that are my boss so I serve them then I have employees so maybe that's four groups that I really have to satisfy um, and so I think the city administrator experience has just given me more knowledge how to deal with all four of those requirements mm. yeah yeah well it's okay so I think it goes back to why many people ask me why would you want to do this yeah <laughs> yeah well, it's uh, it's a bit of broadening, which is good for all of it us. Is. It? it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I understand that uh, it's been rumored for a number of years. We know the the city uh, police department has been in a terribly crowded situation for a whole bunch of years. We've been talking about it, but it doesn't seem like we could ever get anything off the ground. So as I say, it's been rumored for years that we're going to get a new building. Is that uh, is that rumor still floating? Is it appropriate to say hallelujah? <laughs> but yes, that well, is. Well, it will be after you get a building. It's yeah. not rumor. We uh, we are in the uh, the design process of, of building for uh, for the police department. As you know, uh, we've been in the current building since about 1952-53. So it has well extended its use. That building's 24-7. Yeah. It's not just eight, eight hours, yeah, everybody yeah. close up, go home. Yeah. It's 24-7. So if it's uh, 50 years old in calendar years, it's really about 150 years old in use. Yeah. Um, so we're in the design stage, working with the architect now to get the floor plans that we want. Who is your architect? Where it's called Upland Design. They're out of Cookville. Uh, they're doing a couple, they've done a couple other projects here in Tullahoma, which made it pretty easy for us to check some references and see how satisfied Tullahoma people were with their work. Um, but I think we have maybe one, maybe two more meetings with them to review the design and, uh, and then we move to the next step, which is the site plans for our planning and codes to review. Uh, and then after that, our timeline is hoping in October to be able to go out for the request for uh, qualifications and pricing. And then hopefully have a contract uh, selected by December and then January, February of this year. Of this year. <laughs> and then January, February, you know, weather dependent if the contractor can start or not. But we're definitely hoping by March 1st to begin the actual construction phase and then we would hope for about an October, November completion date next year. Okay, so. It's not rumor. <laughs> at, at the end of 19, you hope to be in your building, huh? We should, we, we, we do hope to be in it and uh, uh, it's gonna be well needed. As you said, right now we're cramped. We've got about uh, actually 4,200 square feet of usable space. Um, this new building right now, we're looking at about 13,000 square feet. So we're looking at almost, almost tripling almost what we've got. Much, yeah. uh, and, and that's just for our immediate needs, but we're also planning what our 20-year needs 20 are. Year, uh, so we're yeah. going to construct the building to where uh, in 20 years or whatever, if we need to add, do some additions, that we've already got the foundation in place for that. And we'll be right back in just a moment. Have you ever been involved in one of these? And you need one of these? Then look no further than the Russell Barnett Certified Collision Center with a state-of-the-art facility, aluminum capabilities, lifetime paint guarantee, Russell Barnett Auto Rental, 
claims assistance from start to finish, we are here to serve you. So stop by and let us show you why we are number one, the Russell Barnett Certified Collision Center. When your family suffers the loss of a loved one, the caring and compassionate staff at Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel are standing by to assist you in every way possible. We are proud to support local industry and offer only Batesville caskets. Many funeral homes don't own or operate a crematory. We utilize the only crematory in Coffee County. Your loved one never leaves Coffee County. We can accommodate any need and any budget. Consider our complete pre-need service to remove this burden from your family during their time of grief. Lock in today's low costs and protect from inflation. Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel. Our family caring for your family. Welcome back. If you're looking for some entertainment this weekend, you might want to check out the storytelling event coming up Friday in Lynchburg. Peggy Burton spoke with Samantha Fly, who tells us more. I hope there's some storytellers out there today. I have on the set with me Samantha Fly from Lynchburg Hi, and Peggy. the Caboose Cafe. Thank you. Y'all still grilling and I mean, oh, yeah. making barbecue and all that? Yeah, sure are. A storytelling event that's coming up. What's it called? Just storytelling. Just Lynchburg's. Uh, storytelling in Lynchburg. Storytelling in Lynchburg, and it's going to be Friday, September 28th, starts at 6 o'clock. Tell me a little bit what got you started thinking about doing a storytelling event. Well, uh, Mary Jane, who's a friend of mine, and I wanted to go to Jonesboro, and there never seemed to be enough time. So uh, that's a big uh, storytelling place, Jonesboro, yeah. Tennessee. Oh, yeah, the, the yeah. capital, isn't it? I think it's the capital. Anyway, uh, I said, Mary Jane, since we can't go, uh, let's just do it in Lynchburg. Just let's do it in Lynchburg. Everything else is happening in Lynchburg. Why not a storytelling yeah. thing? So, and uh, I think, understand, this is free. It's free. It is and free. And you can get free lemonade That's at the right. Caboose Compliments Cafe. That's right. the cafe. Which is just to the left of the uh, gazebo where you're going to do the right. storytelling. And also, they'll be open till 8 that night. Okay. So, so probably the storytelling will end about eight, but maybe not. Thereabouts. We I know, know that yet. you have some uh, great storytellers coming in. You want to tell me who they are? Well, they are uh, Goose is our uh, Lynchburg uh, Jack Daniels guy. Oh, the the guy that He's does a tour the tours. Guide, yeah, and people know about Goose. And, oh yeah, <laughs> and everybody knows Goose, and so he's uh, really funny, and we're looking forward to hearing him. And, and he tells, uh, uh, I notice on the poster it says, yarns, tales of the past, true stories, ghost stories. I'm not real sure story. what uh, um, Goose is going to tell. Well, it'll be but, good. Yeah, <laughs> but he's great. He's well known and uh, looking forward to it. And then we have Bruce Walker from Huntsville. And he had done storytelling for the cafe radio show. Oh, okay. And uh, Jerry Mansfield's well known. He's I've from. I've heard of him. What? I'm not sure why. It, well, he storytells around. He's a professional. Just, okay, he's a professional. And so is Bruce. They're professionals. Okay. And then uh, John Rickman. Most oh, everybody we know. We all know John Rickman. He's got John. a tale to yeah. tell everywhere he goes. And he's going to sing some stories. Right. He's a singing story man. I got to say. <laughs> and then Dr. Michael Bradley. Is, oh my gosh! Uh, everybody knows Dr. Michael yeah. Bradley. So we're really looking. And then don't want to leave Rachel out. She's from Huntsville. Okay. Rachel Gregory. I would encourage you, if you were going to the storytelling, is to go early. There's a lot to see on the square in Lynchburg, and I would have my supper right there at the Caboose Cafe and uh, be <laughs> ready the for the story, storytelling. Yeah. And please pass the word to your friends. And there's going to be an open mic session. That means when the uh, uh, professional storytellers are through, Right. You let people take the mic. Later. What It'll are you be giving them? About five minutes? Five minutes. So probably. you can get up there and talk for five minutes. <laughs> and I know some people that would just do that in a heartbeat. <laughs> they will have a whistle if <laughs> five minutes is up. You're going to blow them off the stage. <laughs> The pet of the week this week at the Tullahoma Animal Shelter is the beagle mix named Blaine. He's approximately two years old and entered the shelter as a stray. Blaine is up to date on his vaccinations, heartworm negative, and on flea meds. He's great with other dogs and children. Be sure to check out the shelter on Facebook for information about upcoming events and fundraisers. Remember, you can help support your local shelter by adopting, donating, or volunteering. 
for more details, contact Teresa at 454-9580. The Tullow Animal Shelter is located at 942 Maplewood Avenue. The Coffee County Humane Society feature pet this week is Dimple. He is a blue terrier mix looking for a forever home. The shelter also has many other dogs available for adoption at 1210 Oakdale Street in Manchester. Their hours of operation at the shelter are 7.30 a.m. until 2.30 p.m. Monday through Friday and 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. on Saturday. The shelter's phone number is 723-2730. Donations for animal care can be made to the Coffee County Humane Society at P.O. Box 252 in Manchester. Their website is www.coffeehumane.org. Stay with us. Your weather forecast is coming up next. The Russell Barnett Automotive family has launched its new Owner Advantage program. It starts as simple as your first year's maintenance is included with the purchase. We have one year, three year, five year plans available. Car detailing, car rental, collision repair. Stop by one of our five locations and let one of our certified sales staff tell you all about it. The Russell Barnett Automotive Family Advantage Program. And remember, my question is, why buy anywhere else? Here at Manchester Funeral Home, we know the importance of living and working in our local community because it's those families who we serve during their time of need honorably. We believe in supporting local business and offer only 100% Batesville caskets, the best in the industry and a driver of our local economy. If you want straightforward and fair pricing while working with the people you know, choose Manchester Funeral Home, serving your community since 1932. And pre-planning and pre-funding can be the best gift you ever leave your loved ones. Call us to pre-arrange. Manchester Funeral Home, our family caring for your family since 1932. So you've been meaning to do something healthy, commune with nature, get outdoors and meet new people. We have the perfect solution. Come hike with us. You can find a Tennessee Trails Association chapter near you, including Clarksville, Columbia Franklin, Highland Rim, Jackson, Knoxville, Oak Ridge, Memphis, Murfreesboro, Nashville, Plateau at Crossville, and Upper Cumberland. We're on the web at tennesseetrails.org. It's fun, it's stress-free, and it's good for you. See you on the trails. Welcome back. We'll take a look at your weather forecast at this time, starting with your weather history on this day. Our record high was in 1941 at 92 degrees. The record low was in 1940 at 36 degrees. The average high on this day is 78, and the average low is 55. Chance of rain in the forecast for tonight with a low of around 58. Partly cloudy weather expected on Friday with a high of 77 and a low of 58 and mostly sunny weather in the forecast for Saturday with a high of 80 and a low of 60. And that's our newsletter report for this evening. We invite you to join us each Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday at 6, 8 and 10 for Newsleader on 6. You have a good evening. And from all of us on Newsleader 6 wishes you and your families a gorgeous weekend. Thank you.